Hello everybody, this is Mateo and I'm finally back. Good god, it's been a forever, and by a forever I mean like five days. However, that is not the point. Um, I'm finally back, yay! And Luigi's going to go save Mario, yay! Um, so where have I been? Well, on vacation, good sir. I just recently had my fall break, and it's been over a couple days now, I just... It just seems that whenever traveling back home from the vacation spot, I always feel very ill, specifically to the stomach. Uh, so I was feeling that, and I'm mostly, if not fully, recovered from that. And so here I am, finally! Uh, so yeah, that's where I've been. Also, story stuff's happening, but I'm not going to acknowledge it in the slightest, except for right here. As I tell this next story, uh, four days ago now, um, it was two days ago when I first saw it, I got an email from YouTube. Uh, this is a very strange email. In the email, it said that I could possibly monetize my videos, which means that I can basically put on the ads and make money from it. <clears throat> which, I'm going to be completely honest, would be pretty cool. However, we're talking about me here. 45 subscribers, like 10,000 total views at most. Me. So apparently, it doesn't take a whole lot to become a YouTube partner anymore. I mean, before it would be only the people with like close to a million subscribers or hundreds of thousands of subscribers that would be partners. However, now I am um, apparently eligible to become one. So I'm just like, oh, well, okay, I could become one. However, I'm not going to because quite honestly, I don't deserve it. Um, so yeah. But I decided to check the page anyways to see what made me so eligible that YouTube went and sent an email to me. Um, and it was probably just some like automated message that you get when you reach a certain amount of video views or something. Like, I don't think that somebody specifically sent me a message. But either way, I was trying to see like what the criteria was to see what I filled in order to become a partner because it's, it surely isn't the subscriber count, I can tell you that right now. 45 is not a high number in the slightest. Um, not to say that I'm not grateful for all of you, I, mean, I am, it's just comparatively, it really isn't all that big. I mean, when you have Chugga Conroy who has like 300,000, and Nintendo Capri Sun who has like 200,000, or I don't know how many, I don't really pay attention to their numbers, I don't see why I should. Also, yay for little Game Boy cameo, I'm going to point that out because I thought it was pretty awesome. But back to my story, so yeah, I looked at the page to see what made me so eligible, and I really couldn't find anything except for what ma would make me not eligible, because like, the third thing that they had shown that said, uh, do not monetize videos if they have this, and they showed like a, a short list of five things. The third thing on there was video game footage, and I was like, oh, wow. That's like the only thing this channel does. This is a video game channel. No, this is Patrick. I mean, seriously, gaming is in the name of this channel, as well as my name. Um, yes, that is my actual name. Not the full name, my last name is not Gaming Group. However, that would be interesting. But, yeah. Anyways... The Beanstar broke apart a long time ago, and now we're finally going to go put it together in order to get the princess back. That's our basic quest. <laughs> Excuse me, like I said, not 100% better, however, mostly. I am able to talk without being in extreme pain, uh, so that is helpful. But, yeah, it was just... Like, yay, I got this email for something that I can't do. And, you know, I knew from the beginning that if I wanted to get partnered, I'd have to get partnered with Machinima or any of those other gaming channels if I really wanted to. However, that is not going to happen for a very long time, if at all. And if I do end up making money from this, I highly doubt it though. I'm not all too great. At least, I don't think so. Apparently, 45 of you thought I was great enough to hit the now white button. It used to be yellow. 
And I finally skipped one of those arrow blocks. I learned my lesson. Yay. But yeah, apparently 45 of you thought I was great enough to want to see more and hit the white button. And yeah, that's awesome. I'm don't I'm not trying to sound like ungrateful for all of you guys because really that's awesome. Where am I even going with this anymore? I'm losing my train of thought. It is slowly derailing and all the spectators are slowly becoming super scared. Uh, there's your metaphor of the day, and also there's your literary term of the day, and yet the metaphor and simile are probably the two that almost everybody, if not everybody, knows. While we have other ones like soliloquy and denouement, or however you pronounce it, it's some French word, and I'm not taking French so ha, huh? but other ones that people have never really, um heard of, and don't ask me to explain them all because I don't know them myself. Those are just some examples that I could quickly think of. Uh, but now we're in the ship because they stole our bean star piece, and it is recommended that we go to this one first, mainly because, uh, well, we can't necessarily get the other ones yet. Even Toadsworth said it would be best to get this one first, and so we're doing that. Yep. Yeah. So, apparently, we cannot um, really progress. You have to do these things in this order of events. Like, it's really kind of cryptic on how you do it all. So, yeah, now that we've talked to him about the membership card, now we can go up here, and go up here, and do a minigame. It is one of the last minigames, if not the last, but an incredibly annoying one. It's my least favorite. Uh, although it's a puzzle, and I think it's fun now. Back th back in the day, when I first played this game, it was my least favorite. And I actually became stuck in this boat. Because it's kind of a maze, except not really. I mean, I was kind of a stupid kid. And I kind of am now. I'm smarter than before, at least. I can figure these things out. However, I'm not the brightest, I'm sure. And yet I'm doing IB, so... WTF. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much what I've been up to. I don't even know where I ended that story off, so I'm hoping it made sense. Uh, the skeleton guy kind of looks like Donkey Kong a little bit, even though his name is Bink or Blink or something like that. Which is funny because he's a skeleton and he can't blink. But he looks like Donkey Kong and he's throwing barrels at us. It's a reference, probably. Maybe an accidental one, however people got it. Basically what we need to do here is line up all the similar colored barrels. Um, and fail at it apparently. There we go. By using the Mario Bros to kind of push and pull them using their sudden bars of force. Uh, because the Mario Bros can do that now. And can I get this to work? Oh, I gotta do it the difficult way of course. There's a much easier way that I could do that. Uh... But yeah, it's just a short little mini game. You have to beat 10 points, match up all the barrels in a single row color. Eventually they'll introduce some more colors. In fact, right now I think he's... Nope, not yet. Uh, very soon he will actually throw in the color yellow. Uh, so that just makes it more difficult to make matches. Although at the same time... No, it's mainly more difficult. I think he does it around the 8th or ninth score. So you, and he doesn't like throw out enough of the same col enough of the new color being yellow to actually score a point with it. He throws it out like two at a time. So you're going to just have them blocking the way a bit. Okay, it is a ninth point. See, now there are just two there that we have to watch out for that'll basically block the way from scoring until we can get more of them. But what you really want to do is try to focus on a row that you could possibly get and don't stray from that as you try to solve it and figure it out. However, if it is impossible to get that row, if you soon figure it out if, or if you mess it up, then go to something else. And also for the most part, ignore these yellow barrels. I mean, it's pretty difficult to line them all up just because you have less of them. However, if you do get to about this amount of points, then you might be able to pull it off, like I just did there. But they're not worth like any extra points or anything, it's not like two points for the yellow ones. 
but yeah, that's basically how this works. And once you beat 10, you're done. However, I'm just finishing it up. Uh, you keep on going till you eventually score. Aw oh, man, I just, I just saw an easy point that I could have gotten. And, but oh well, I got 15 and I don't think I can score again in two seconds. So yeah, we're done here. But I beat 10 and I get my membership card and you can play this mini game again. Do you get other prizes from it? I honestly do not know. You probably get some beans. And yeah, um, you'd probably have to beat your high score. So you might want to just stop at 10 and then do 11 and 12 and 13 and 14. I'm guessing here, but yeah, that's how that works. Speaking of beans, the Teehee beans, I never noticed this ever until like watching through this earlier. I was still telling my story at the time, but yeah, the the exes for the Teehee beans in this place are actually in the little sand circles. They're in the middle of those. So if you see a sand circle, Check the middle of it to see if there's an X, because if so, you can get a Teehee Bean. And to be completely honest, I don't think I've ever gotten a single Teehee Bean ever. And now we can finally get the Bean Star, except not really, because this guy wants us to do yet another favor. Uh, we have to get the big guy Bloat out of the way. And he is bloated because he drank a whole bunch of Chocola Coal. Chocola Cola, excuse me. That was probably the loudest thing ever, I apologize. So, yeah, was he called- was he always called Bloat? Or did he just get that nickname when he became all bloated for drinking the Chocola Cola? Or has he always been bloated? This guy needs some backstory. But, to... basically... we hit that random tile that suddenly appeared that wasn't there before but oh well and then all of a sudden for whatever reason dynamite pops up this really doesn't make any sense and you can switch mario to fire because what lights a dynamite fuse fire and apparently even though we light it right on the fuse it doesn't work however if we light it to the left of the fuse it definitely works and he thinks this is hilarious because he's finally out and well that's bad Wow, we, apparently we were able to cause some extra explosions just by knocking the big guy out of the hole in the wall. And in fact, it was so great that we knocked this ship back into sea, or rather the ocean. Yes it is, so apparently we are on the ocean, this is pretty cool. And you can actually see some future slash past areas in the background. Although, they don't really look like it, they actually are. I just now noticed that. The one on the left is a future area. Hopefully I'll remember to point out where it is. And... I believe the one on the right was the place where we got our hand power-ups. Or, yeah, it's probably that. Or it's the minigame island thing that I'll never point out ever because I just don't care for it. But anyways, we're back in the sea, and I never knew what's over here. Oh, it's that area we've been before, where we broke physics five times. That's awesome. Memories... Yeah, now we're back in the sea. We're chasing down the Beanstar. This is becoming a whole lot more of a hassle than it really should be. I'm just looking around, seeing if I can find any secrets. However, that is not the case, and I'm going to skip all the bloopers just because. Seriously, why couldn't we have let Prince Peasley do all this while we try to go rescue the princess? Instead, we're giving in to the villain's demands. That is like, bad RPG. Um, that is just bad RPG rule number one. And also, we broke physics again. Um, just like in Spongebob. I hope I can find that clip now so you all will know what I'm talking about. Uh, hopefully the power of YouTube will be able to find it. Uh, perhaps. I doubt it though, because I don't know. Just don't think that, that one random cl clip would be in there. But either way, we have new enemies! Finally, it's been like forever since we fought a battle. Because we were kind of stuck on that ship and whatnot. But either way, we have the Star Kisses right here. Uh, really easy. Really easy to dodge because their attack is so slow. Uh, if they shake their hips, they're going to shoot the heart at Mario. And if they 
uh, curl up in a ball, then they're going to shoot it at Luigi, uh, as you will now see. See? Rather easy. And then the cheap cheap, when you hit it, it will become a puffer cheap and be all spiky and possibly poison you. And then if you hit it again with the hammer and you don't kill it, it'll become a regular cheap cheap. So it kind of switches between the two. Uh, and the way that you dodge it is different yet the same. It's odd. Like, you jump over it, or jump on it, you know, jump on it, jump on it. Okay, anyways. You get assaulted by bubbles, of course. You know, the power of bubbles, Mr. Bubble Man. Uh, lost my train of thought again. That is happening a lot. I thought that would be critical, however it wasn't. But yeah, you hit the um, regular cheap cheap by jumping, and then the spiky one you hammer when dodging. Uh, the Malabut, which I completely missed, is a rather annoying enemy, where it'll fart bubbles up your nose, which honestly would be both disgusting and smelly and painful. Um, so yeah, also Mario leveled up. And then the Malabut also, when hit, will counterattack by throwing its pillow at you. And although it is rather easy to dodge because it moves at 0 miles per hour, and by 0 I mean 0.12 or something like that, uh, really slowly basically is what I'm trying to say here, and you can hammer it, but it's just the fact of how long it takes the uh, pillow to go across the screen that makes them annoying, and the fact that they do it every single time that they're hit. But either way, continuing on, that's pretty much all the enemies we can find in this section of the underwater, and this room doesn't make any sense at all. Just a random fire in the middle of the room. And it's like, oh, by the way, we can still break physics. As we shall now do so. What was that? Hello, random exclamation mark. That is the first time I've seen that ever. I'm still learning new things from this game by doing this Let's Play. Uh, what is this exclamation mark? Well, let's switch over to Luigi and see what we can do with it. Maybe it's a hidden block? Maybe small Mario can find hidden blocks, perhaps? Uh, let's try it. Well, that doesn't seem to be it, so let's hammer him. Oh, it's a chuckle bean. So apparently, little Mario can find random bean spots. It might be in those rocks, like that one right there to the left, or like the one that we actually got a bean from. I'm sure if I were to go over there and check the rock, there might be a bean there. However, I don't care enough to check. But either way, that's going to be it for this part. Um, I will see you all next time, where we hopefully get the bean. Star, peace. I cut off again, that is great. Yay! Uh, see you all next time, bye.